Okay, this is passage seven, data on 67C. Our DRC approach, D is data, that means don't read. Just spend a bit of time orienting yourself to the passage, uh, to the questions in, in 20 to 30 seconds. Our approach to the questions is the R and R approach. So you're gonna read the question and then reread the question. So in your first reading, you're just trying to understand what it's asking, kind of orienting yourself, skimming, if you will. And then you reread, you're really breaking it down step by step. So as we go through it, um, I'm going to be doing the reread part. I already read it. Hopefully you've already read it and we're rereading. If you haven't read it before we start, pause the video and read it before we start. And for data passages, uh, they're just going to have data. That's not going to say study one or study two. So in this one, we want to look at the chart. It looks like we have frequency, has a key in air and water. It's kind of a confusing chart here and intensity. And you want to get to the questions as quickly as possible. According to the figure, which the following is closest to the lowest frequency that can be heard by a human. So we have this threshold of hearing line that's labeled. So the bottom of that line will be the lowest that can be heard. So 2 times 10 to the 1. You do have to know scientific notation. So 2 times 10 to the 1 would be 20. So your answer is G. As humans age, it is common for selective hearing loss to occur at high sound frequencies, which the following best illustrates this loss. So before loss, the threshold is higher. So the solid line should be higher because that's before loss. And then after loss, the threshold is lower. So the dashed line should be lost. So we're going to eliminate anything with the dashed line that is higher. So it's going to eliminate choice B. And then we are only considering high frequencies. So that eliminates the others. So choice A is your correct choice. Based on the figure, a sound of a given frequency will have the highest intensity for which of the following conditions. So we're looking for highest intensity, that's the x-axis at the bottom. So let's look first at sound is passing through. So this is our key, air and water. Air is dashed, water is dotted. We see the dotted line is further to the right than the dashed line, so water is more intense. Now we're going to look at the s. Is 100 or 10 to the negative 8? And the 100 is also further to the right. 10 to the negative 8 is way over on the left. So it'd be 100%. So your answer is F. Number 39. A student hypothesized that sounds of any intensity at 10 to the fifth, I guess that's hertz, so that's way up there at the top, put your finger on it, would be painful for humans to hear. Do the data in the figure support this hypothesis? So we see the threshold of hearing ends before 10 to the fifth. And so humans cannot hear that, so it can't be painful. So the answer would be C. Based on the figure, does S depend upon the frequency of a sound wave of a given intensity? So we're looking at frequency, and then given intensity is the bottom. And so the S value doesn't change even as intensity changes. So that would imply there's no direct relationship. So the, as the frequency increases, S remains constant. So there is no dependence. So J.